Hey, Larry here from Larry's Fountain Pens, and uh, today I'm going to be re-reviewing the Noodler's Ahab, one of my favorite fountain pens. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the pen. I'm going to describe it to you. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about the pen. Um, give you some measurements break down the pen a little, do some nib comparisons, some writing, and that should take care of it. But uh, let's look at the pen for a while. Okay, this is the Noodler Ahab, the blue one. And Noodlers also came out with the clear one, as you see here. And they do have Noodlers on the clip. And if you buy one of these pens, or if you had one of these pens, or have one of these pens, they have this peculiar, peculiar smell to it because of the resin that's used on the pen. But in time, it will go away. It doesn't hurt the pen. Let me say this first of all. If you're a new person coming into the fountain pen roll and you're thinking about getting one of these, uh, you really want to flush out that nib really good. You know, water's fine because uh, they do or may come with oil on the nib because after they turn it, there could be quite a bit of oil left on the nib. But, you know, you never know. So just in case, to be safe, you want to flush it so that way you won't have any nib issues like skipping or hard starts. Okay? Thought I'd say that first. Again, the body is that resin, and uh, it is an, either an eyedropper or it has a plunger, as you can see through the clear one, and I'll get to that in a minute. It has a flex steel nib, which in my opinion is awesome. It is a friction fit nib, and I do like the silver trim around the uh, bottom of the cap and the clip and the finley on top. So it's a nice pin. Uh, let me show you the red one I have as well. And here's the red one. And the pins are about $23, so it's not going to break the bank. And if you happen to lose it, it would be devastating to me, but at least. It's not a hundred dollar pen, right? Now the length of the pen closed just like you see it. 5.5 inches. The pen does post. And that would make it a whopping 6.7 inches. And uh, it's comfortable in the hand. And for me, I have small hands and it fits nicely in my hands. As you go down the barrel, there's not much of a step off, but you feel the threads right below the barrel, right here, but they're not sharp, they're not annoying, and you have a, a nice grip for small, large, chunky, big fingers. So, and I hold my pin just like this way down right about here on this level. That's where I like to write and hold my pen. Now what's cool about this pen is all about what's under the hood meeting the nib. This is a flex nib and uh, it is a nice nib in my opinion. The show you the difference real quick we can get a close-up shot of the nibs. The flex nib has that cut all the way down the nib and it goes down even further. So when you flex you're going to get that flex, okay? And then on a regular nib like the Ahab Clear, you see where it stops off here at the hole, the split. You got a full split down the nib here and you got a short one 
right here because it's not flex. And another thing about these pins, if you want to use a different nib, you can. On this one, I'm using a Anderson medium nib, Joe won't nib in it. And it's a friction fit, meaning you get a hold of your nib, and I've done this before in other videos, about here and here, and you just pull out, okay? And it goes back in. So it, it's not rocket science by no means. Uh, Nathan made these pins to tinker with, to explore. Uh, he did a great job. Uh, on the pins, he made them affordable so people can afford the pins. So I'm going to use a clear one right now because I have this pin inked up. Uh, well, I think before I do that, let me finish giving you some more measurements here. The body weight of the pin is 0 0.4 ounces. The cap weight, it's uh, about 0 0.2 ounces. Uh, the overall weight is 0 0.6 ounces and it holds about 2 mils, 2.00 mils, okay? So the, the diameter of the grip, I was telling you about a few seconds ago, is about 0 0.4 inches. So you have a decent grip there. At least I think you do. Now let's go back into the pen for a minute. I'm going to screw the barrel here to show you the plunger and this is how you fill your pin. Pull up and down. Now sometimes it may be a little hard when you pull that plunger up because the O-rings are in there real nice, snug and tight. But after a few times of this, they'll start to loosen up. Um, you unscrew the converter and you don't want to lose this because this, when you lose this, well, and I guess you have to go to the eyedropper because this you need for the plunger to suck up your ink in here. So right there. And this does come out. So you always want to put that in a safe place if you're going to make this pin into an eyedropper. Don't forget to use silicone grease around. all around there. Let me put that before I lose it. So it's really a cool pen and I, I've had different inks in there before uh, as an eyedropper which I don't use eyedroppers a lot. I'm just, I've really never been into an eyedropper. I know a lot of people are but I did it for review purposes only. But uh, you know it really is a worthy pen. Uh, you may hear otherwise, and that's perfectly all right. Again, the pen really writes extremely well. Um, let me just show you the nib against the Conklin Durograph. And you see right here, where this slit down the nib stops right there and there's the smiley face again with the Ahab that slit goes all the way down so you can get that nice flex that people like doing so there's a difference uh, you know what I found out in the people with pins that people that like to flex, they, they, they tend to want their pin to do a lot of line variation, so they tend to put a lot of pressure on the nib. You don't have to do that with a pin. First of all, if it's not a flex pin, don't try to make it do what it can't do. If it's not a flex pin, then you're not going to get flex out of it. You can get some line variation from a pin depending on the nib. Again, you need to be very careful because you don't want to spring the tines. Boom. For me, if a pin is not a flex nib, I don't try 
to flex the nib because, like I said, it's not a flex nib. So, leave it alone. If you don't believe me, then you'll learn the hard way. So, I'm going to do some writing real quick. And the ink that I'm going to be using is the Noodler's Blue. And it kind of reminds me of the Pilot Irizuku ASA GAO. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Okay? But that's the Noodler's Blue with the Pilot Irizuku ASA right here. Very cool blue. So I'm going to use the uh, Franklin Kristoff sugar cane paper. And I hope you find this flex nib interesting. Uh, this is no pressure at all. Nice and wet. That's what I like about it. Now I'm going to talk what I like and don't like. That's what I like about it. Now we're going to write with some flex on it. On the downstroke. You see the flex here? And no flex there? Alright. There's no pressure. And there's the pressure right there. Definitely see the flex. It does a great job keeping up with the ink. And I am learning to flex. Not a bad little flex nib for 23 bucks for the pin, wouldn't you say? Now I'll do some writing. And we'll do some reverse. And that's about all you're going to do because it can get a bit scratchy but you cannot put a lot of pressure but you can get some different line variation but you know I never write mine reverse or upside down because I write with it the way I was taught to write with the pen
you can find the, the noodlers they have really anywhere. Uh, check out your favorite pin dealer and uh, pick up one or two. $23. Again, if you're just new coming into the fountain pin world, this is a pin that would be fun to be uh, hanging out with. Uh, you can get it with the flex or without the flex. It's up to you. Uh, I find them both very interesting to work with. Remember, you will get that smell. I'll let Mr. Announcer smell it. You can smell it. It's a little fruity smelling. Uh, and that's that material they use on the resin, but it will go away. But uh, they are some fun pins. Uh, and if you're just a person that's not a newbie, but you're on a budget, and you're looking for a pin that flex, has a de decent flex nib, without that high dollar price, then you might want to check out the Noodler's Ahab Flex. I like it. Now, what do I not like about the pen? You know, really, there's nothing I, I don't like about the pen. Uh, it's a simple, decent, affordable, practical pen with or without a flex nib that would be up to you so and they have different colors now I bought these back in 2015 I believe I like the colors I like the pens and I just like noodlers uh, but believe it or not I haven't used these pins a whole lot because when you're a pin, at least for me, when I do pin reviews, I have so many pins that I'm doing reviews on that I tend to forget about some other pins so they don't get used as often as they need to be used. So I inked this baby up and reintroduced it and I hope you found the noodlers they have interesting. You can leave your comments below in the box and you can leave your input. You may like it, you may not like the pen. It's your money, use it wisely. Be safe and remember, don't text and drive. Later folks!